Hi there. Today we're taking a look at this dual channel DDS signal generator that I bought on eBay. The signal generator is a, from a company called MH Instec uh, in China. Mechanically, it's very lightweight, but it actually looks pretty good. Um, in front, there are two channels uh, out from the signal generator, and there's an external input that I believe can be used as a counter. Then there are some uh, push buttons, which actually feels really nice and, and solid. At the back, there's an on-off switch, a DC 5 volt in, a USB connector here, and a TTL plug for, I guess, for different uh, timing output. The plastic box itself is, uh, is adequate. It's a little bit of a soft kind of plastic. There's a couple of legs that can be uh, used to angle the device. The first impression is uh, pretty decent for the price. I paid about 45 British pounds I think for this and um, this is the highest end model, the one that goes to 25 megahertz. There are other uh, DDS signal generators from the same factory and the frequency range for these starts from I think about 10 uh, megahertz. Uh, when you buy the signal generator you also get a little uh, wall watt uh, power supply and uh, nicely enough they even knew I was in Denmark and they have attached the correct adapter for it so really well well done on top of that we have two cables with uh, BNC connectors for channel 1 and 2 and uh, some crocodile clips at the other end and on top of that there's a USB cable and there's a little uh, PCB that converts the TTL connector output on the back to screw terminals. Uh, and finally there's a little CD with the software. So yeah, the people who made this, they really thought about everything. All the cables and peripherals that you would ever need for this device is there. So anyway, let's uh, power it on and see what it can do. Okay, so the first impression after powering it on is that the LEDs here are too bright or not aligned with the holes or maybe the front panel is too transparent because channel 2 is the only one that is on but from where I'm sitting it looks like uh, both channel 1 and channel 2 are on uh, because there's no divider between these two and the light from uh, LED 2 can be seen through the hole for channel 1 so to do anything on this machine you have to use the shift key a lot so anything you want to do, you want to change the channel, you want to set the frequency, everything you have to do it using the shift key first. Yeah, I don't know whether I like this concept. I would have liked another set of buttons for this, uh, but at least it's consistent. So first we set up channel 1. Uh, what you do is that you go to channel 1 and you'll see the frequency for channel 1. and. Uh, we can set the cursor here at the, the kilohertz marker and we can increase the frequency by one kilohertz at a time. You can of course also move the cursor left one digit and uh, use 10 kilohertz at a time or all the way here and use uh, 100 kilohertz at a time. So yeah, that's pretty nice up to 25 megahertz and then we can set it using shift set once you do that you go down here you can set the different types of uh, like for example you can select that you can change the amplitude you can also change the waveform right now it's arbitrary the arbitrary functions you can key in yourself using the software on the pc and upload it to the box using the usb connector I'm not going to show that in this review because I'm never ever going to use that feature. But the possibility is there. Uh, anyway, now I have set my frequency to 25 megahertz and a sine wave and now I can switch on the output. And there we have it at uh, 25 megahertz. As you can see, the sine wave is not a perfect sine wave. So if we reduce the frequency, we should see a nice sine wave at some point. And, uh, you know, it's hard to say by, by just looking when is the sine wave uh, good. But I will connect it to a spectrum analyzer uh, later on and we will see uh, what happened. Now we're down at 1 MHz and the sine wave looks pretty nice. If we change the wave shape to square, 
uh, there's quite a bit of ringing. I'm not quite sure what causes this ringing because uh, I have tried terminating the oscilloscope with 50 ohms and uh, that didn't make much difference except uh, of course the amplitude would drop to roughly about half. So because the amplitude drops to about half I'm pretty sure the output impedance of the signal generator is indeed 50 ohm. Since it's 50 ohm the amplitude on the display here should be showing half of what it's showing here. The Chinese when they made this they actually is kind of sitting between two chairs because on the one hand they expect you to terminate the output by 50 ohm and on the other hand the amplitude uh, shown on the display is based on the termination that is uh, maybe one mega ohm uh, open circuit. So you have to be aware of that. Now let's take the square wave and uh, turn up the frequency and see what happens. See it gets more and more out of shape and uh, look what happens at about 5 megahertz. There's a funny jitter on the signal. So the DDS has some problems. Uh, and uh, let's continue to run it up frequency and at about 10 megahertz the square wave is just uh, <laughs> the square wave just becomes a sine wave so about 4 or 5 megahertz you can't really use the square wave function to be honest that's also what they said in the in the in the sales material so yeah uh, you can't really complain about that and triangle that is also up to 2 megahertz, 3 megahertz, 4, 5, now it becomes just rounded again. I would have liked them to prevent you from entering any frequency above 1 megahertz when you set the waveform to anything but sine. And, but this is a small thing. And sawtooth, <laughs> yeah, there we have the ringing again. And sawtooth the other way, there's also some ringing. Apart from the waveform, we can adjust the amplitude. And that works pretty good. 2 volt is actually showing as 2 volt on the oscilloscope. And uh, that's nice. And you can also see that uh, the, the level is uh, adjusted around 0. Uh, which is uh, the correct way of doing things. The next way is the DC offset. You can see here we can run it up and down, move it up and down. Duty cycle. We can adjust it. And it's really stable. Look at it. That is really nice and it's in steps of 1%, so really well done. The next one is the phase. For phase we need to show two traces at the same time. So let me just set up channel 2 quickly. There we go. And look how nice that is. Very nice. So let's just change the waveform for that. Set it. Waveform. We got to get a square wave here. There we go, gorgeous, they're smack on top of each other. So that is really nice. So let's go down here and uh, adjust the face. Then we can shift the face all the way to 360 degrees and round and round and round. So very, very nice. And uh, you can set sweep frequency so you can get it to sweep from um, one frequency to another which is a very nice uh, feature so okay let's set s sweep frequency one let's start at uh, let's say zero hertz and frequency two 25 megahertz and we sweep over 10 seconds and linear or logarithmic uh, sweep mode so really nice for audio and you can switch on the sweep let's switch it on now uh, if I know how and there you see the sweep beautiful so yeah really nice I, I really like this little machine um, see the sweep running there beautiful so this is the output from the frequency generator at the 25 megahertz. As you can see, if this is 0 dB, uh, this is 0 dBc, then we have 10, 20, 30, 40. It's about 40, 42, 44 dB down for the first uh, harmonic. And uh, although the sine wave looks a little bit weird, 
on the oscilloscope this is actually uh, pretty good of course you have to be aware of that the harmonics are about 40 dB down and not maybe 80 or 90 dB down because when you're doing some RF work uh, this could be uh, critical um, but for a normal signal generator I think 40 dB down is actually not too bad particularly not for the price and uh, let's just continue down to about 10 megahertz and uh, <coughs> here we have a big harmonic if we zoom in on that it's uh, still about 45 dB down and if you remember on the oscilloscope when we go down to about 1 megahertz uh, everything looks pretty smooth so let's just uh, zoom in a little bit more and um, what do you know actually the sine wave is just as ugly at 1 megahertz as it is on the others this must be inherent to this signal generator just for kicks let's change the sine wave to a square wave this is a square wave and um, they kind of taper off at about what do we have here about 30 or 40 megahertz so basically that tells us that internally in the in the signal generator they have a, a low pass filter that filters at about 30 megahertz so that also explains that when i change the frequency up uh, near the filter it gets more and more sine wavy yeah so i guess when they designed this uh, signal generator they had to make a uh, some kind of output filter to make everything look nice and that has uh, indeed impacted on the higher harmonics and that's why the square wave and the triangular wave and the sawtooth and whatever kind of look funny above one megahertz but like all other engineering this is a compromise so let's take a look at what we've got inside here um, obviously on the front panel there's a little there's a few PCBs uh, don't know if you can see that there's a PCB with a different uh, with the push buttons and there's a PCB over here for the LCD display um, and this is just the basic stuff uh, and the real magic happens down here well first impression is that it's really laid out very nicely uh, the cables are, are okay they are connectors at both oops they are connectors at both ends the PCB quality and the soldering is uh, okay nothing to write home about and um, we have obviously uh, some power supply on the on the left here and then we have a little cpu which is a st micro as far as i can see and uh, a lattice fpga uh, down there and uh, it's all run from this crystal here uh, apart from that there's a r2r um, digital to analog converter the reference for that is the supply voltage to the lattice which obviously will give some uh, issues they could probably have added a lot of transistors here and driven it from a stable supply but uh, for the price I think this is good enough then we have here we have an output stage there are some op amps and a power uh, stage here uh, that should be able to drive the 50 ohm output and then we have a couple of uh, little relays here to do a different kind of uh, switching as you know I haven't tried the frequency counter but basically the signal comes in here uh, and goes into the lattice I suppose uh, with a timer counter in built in here so actually it's quite a nice little machine it comes with all the peripherals all the cables all the CDs everything that you need to get up and running quickly and um, if you can live with the limitations uh, particularly that anything apart from sine wave you cannot really use it above one megahertz then it's actually quite a good little machine it's a good little signal generator and um, the reason I bought it was that you can generate more than one sine wave it has two outputs and uh, you can chase the phase between them and that is really really uh, a nice feature if you want to do modulation and uh, demodulation particularly IQ and uh, QAM and the other newer modulation forms so yeah I kind of like it despite of its low cost it's uh, going to be quite useful in my lab here so yeah there we have it and thank you for watching